Aclesia cardia can be diagnosed as it is a motility disorder of the esophagus as we know by doing a specialized test called as esophageal manometry. Esophageal manometry basically tells you about two things. One is how is the peristalsis of the food pipe and second is what is happening to the lower esophageal sphincter whether the pressure is high or low and whether it is in a state of contraction or not. So by doing an esophageal manometry we would know that is there peristalsis there or not if there is no peristalsis it is an achalasia cardia. We also would know whether the lower esophageal sphincter is in a state of contraction or it has a high pressure then again it goes in favor of achalasia cardia. This is just a brief uh, overview I am trying to give you. There are three types of achalasia cardia which are defined based on esophageal manometry. So what is esophageal manometry? Basically a small catheter which is placed through the nose into the food pipe up to the lower end and then patient is asked to make serial attempts of swallows which are dry and wet swallows and during these swallows a um, recording is made on the computer on a um, prefixed of software and in that we can come to know the entire movement of food pipe which we call it as peristalsis, we can notice the pressure in the food pipe and so on and that is how the manometry studies are being done. The second investigation which is done in old days but still valid because we come to know about anatomical finding of a food pipe is barium swallow. When we do a barium swallow we ask the patient to swallow a barium which is a white liquid and then we take serial x-rays. A patient who has achalasia cardia we will have a classical bird beak sign that is like it is like a bird beak at the lower end of esophagus because it is narrowed and in a state of contraction it does not relax so it looks narrowed and then proximally there is a dilatation of the esophagus so it is called as bird beak appearance apart from that we also come to know about size of the esophagus like we call sigma esophagus diverticuli. Uh, which is there in the esophagus and sometimes we may have inflammation of esophagus which can be picked up and uh, can be diagnosed. The third investigation is an endoscopy. By doing an endoscopy what we come to know is that whether the there is a resistance at the lower esophageal sphincter or not, how is the peristalsis which we can notice while doing an endoscopy. We can also know the whether there is an esophagitis or there is a basically inflammation of lower end of esophagus because of retained food which is not going down because of the uh, failure to relax of lower esophageal sphincter. Food remains in the distal esophagus, food remains in the food pipe and that infects and cause esophagitis which can ultimately lead to esophageal cancer. So it is very very important that we diagnose this condition as early as possible to prevent further complications.